What's going on? I'm Liz from Learn Robotics, and welcome to this episode of Learn Robotics with Liz, the show where I talk all things robotics and tech from a perspective of an engineer and share my thoughts on what I think you can do to learn more about tech and ultimately learn robotics. Stay tuned. We have an awesome episode for you here today. If you're watching on YouTube, consider subscribing to my channel or subscribing to the show on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. Ready? Let's get to it. Today's episode is all about slow max. Now, if you're a Windows person, you can still tune in, no problem. A lot of stuff that I'll be sharing is easily applied to a slow Windows computer or a slow other type of computer, but the main difference is the operating system, and we're going to be focusing more specifically on Mac OS. And while I won't be focusing on what computer to buy or why I use a Mac, that's a topic for another episode, if you are curious about my thoughts on computers for robotics, you can go to learnrobotics.org and search computer. I have a bunch of articles about choosing computers and what to buy and why you should buy it, which operating system to use, and actual models of computers that I would recommend based on budget and what you're trying to do with your computer. So go check those out. You can search on learnrobotics.org and let me know what you think about those. But for now, let's jump into the root of the issue, a slow Mac. So picture this, you've just spent thousands of dollars on a Mac and now it's painstakingly slow. You open up Chrome and it lags, you try to view your email and the spinning wheel of death shows up and you're like, oh man, I just spent all this money and my computer's really slow, what should I do? Uh, Well, you could go to the Apple Store, you could get a consult with Genius Bar, you could spend hours there dealing with that. In my opinion, not the best option. You could just go buy a new computer, which if you are using a computer that's super old um, and you do in your mind, you have this idea that, yeah, I probably do need to upgrade my computer. That is actually a valid option. Um, but if you just bought your computer within the last like two or three years, there's if, especially if it's a Mac, if it's a modern Mac, you really shouldn't need to buy a brand new Mac every couple years. They last for a very long time. Um, so... The third option is is you could just do a quick upgrade to the hard drive. So let me tell you a quick story. About three years ago, I bought my mom a brand new iMac for her birthday. And I mean, I have a 2019 Mac. At the time, I had a 2012 MacBook Pro. Um, This iMac was beautiful. If you've ever had that experience where you go up to a brand new iMac and you sit down at it, it's like immersive. It's it's a luxury computer, you know, the luxury vehicle of computers. The 5K screen, the awesome Dolby surround sound. The, it's just a beautiful workstation to work at and an awesome user experience. That was until it wasn't a good user experience. About a year later, my mom's computer was so slow that it had a hard time opening up Chrome. Now, I know Chrome is a bloated memory hogging application, but any modern computer, let alone a 2017 iMac, should be easily able to handle this no problem. So I checked the specs, i5 processor, pretty good, 8 gigs of RAM, pretty good, Uh, one terabyte hard drive, um, okay, seemed like pretty normal specs of a computer of that time. And then I noticed the quick little oversight. So unfortunately, I'd made the mistake of purchasing an iMac with a hard disk drive. And if you are in the market for a computer, my one quick tip is do not buy a computer with a hard disk drive. Those are mechanical drives. They are notoriously very slow. You're going to want to choose a computer with a solid state drive. In terms of capacity, it's the same as any other storage device. So if you have a lot of stuff, you're going to need a larger storage you know, option. You're going to need more gigabytes, Um, but definitely make sure that the spec is a solid state drive. So my first thought was to, okay, let's just go ahead and switch the boot drive. Let me open up the computer. Let me do this upgrade. I'll just switch out the drives. I had done this with my 2012 MacBook Pro. I took out the internal hard drive and replaced it with a solid state drive, took out the optical drive, replaced it with a solid state drive, And as an aside, if you do have a 2012 MacBook Pro and you're still using it and you haven't done the solid state 
upgrade, 100% recommend it. It is the cheapest thing you could do to upgrade your computer that will give you significant differences in probably an hour. I mean, it takes longer to download the operating system than it does to actually do the upgrade. Um, so you can search 2012 Mac on learnrobotics.org to read the full guide on this. It's a super popular article. Um, I've had a lot of people comment on how they've done this upgrade as well, and they've seen that difference. It's, it's super easy to do, highly recommend it. So anyways, my thought was, is okay, cool, I could go ahead and do this upgrade to my mom's iMac. And then I realized how cumbersome it is to actually take apart an iMac. And if you're not careful, you can, you can significantly damage the screen. So rather than make a problem out of a minor problem or a major problem out of a minor problem, I decided, you know what, let's see if we can do this with an external solid state drive. Um, so I decided just to run some tests on the internal drive using the Black Magic tool. You can get a copy of this on the App Store and run it for yourself. And after multiple tests, the results were in, and I was right. The read-write speeds were averaging about 10 megabytes per second, and in layman's terms, this drive was wicked slow and probably the culprit. So rather than rip apart the screen and take the iMac apart, I decided to do a test with an external solid-state drive. And there are many drives to choose from, but I ultimately chose a 500 gigabyte Samsung T7. And there's a link to that particular drive in the show notes. You can check that out. And the cool thing about this drive is it connects via Thunderbolt 3, which a lot of solid state drives do, but the Thunderbolt 3 gives a super fast connection and its read write speeds are well over a thousand megabytes per second. So this, Theoretically, this drive should be, you know, 100 times faster than the current internal drive that the iMac has. And I didn't have to play Geek Squad and take about apart the computer, which was another win-win. So the steps for getting this set up are really easy. Anyone can do it. First, you're going to want to download a copy of the latest macOS from the App Store. And since my iMac was slow, I did these steps on my 2019 MacBook Pro. Then what you want to do is connect the solid state drive and flash the Mac OS onto the drive. And when that's done, you can connect the solid state drive into the slow computer and assign it as the default boot drive. The default boot drive is what runs the operating system when the computer boots up. So you don't have to, once it's set, you don't have to worry about choosing a drive or figuring out what to boot to. The computer will know to go from the external drive rather than the internal drive. And then finally, I just retested the external drive using Blackmagic again, and the speeds averaged around 700 megabytes per second, which is effectively a 70x improvement from the original internal drive. So I 10 out of 10, highly recommend this upgrade, and you don't have to worry about the files on your internal drive. Once you set up the new boot drive, they're accessible in Finder. As long as you know your old password, you should be good to go. For the full detailed steps, visit learnrobotics.org. You can search iMac and the article will pop up. You can also check the show notes for a link to what I discussed in this episode. And that's it for today's episode of Learn Robotics with Liz. I'm Liz from Learn Robotics. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, be sure to like, subscribe, and most importantly, share this with a friend. And I will see you next time.